firmly denounced. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Member. Honourable Members, may I just remind all of us that the topic for today is the issue of humanitarian crisis. I know that when the one speaker has spoken, the others would like to react to that. However, the time now is to discuss the humanitarian crisis which has arisen as a result of the conflict. My next speaker, and it was just a reminder, honorable members, the next speaker now is South Africa. And South Africa, you will be followed by Chile, and that will be the last speaker for the day. The WHO, World Health Organization, and then Chile. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, speaker. Just to make some few reflections. One is that in the 144th Assembly of the IPU in Nisadu and Indonesia, the emergency item was about the conflict in Russia and Ukraine. In the 145th Assembly in Kigali and Rwanda, the emergency item was on Russia and Ukraine. And here now we're discussing an emergency item which when was presented was supposed to be about humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan and Yemen and other countries as well. But now the debate is being shifted back to Ukraine and Russia as if those are the only issues that concern the entire world. That is problematic for mostly Western European countries to want to force okay, feed now, the IPU member, please, of their ahead. own agenda. Deal with the humanitarian crisis, please. Yes, I'm dealing, I'm dealing with that. And then I want to give context that there has to be, of course, concern about the humanitarian crisis that is obtaining in all the countries that are identified in the draft resolution. But I think we should speak openly as well about the role of the military industrial complex that is benefiting out of war and instead of trying to contain the war in many parts of the world is aiding it through the North Antarctic Treaty Organization which historically has played a very destructive role and we must refuse to be bullied into a homogeneous perspective of Western Europe and the Americans that says that everything the else that they do is correct at the expense of everyone. That every time there's global gatherings, all of us are forced into discussing their issues when there are many crises all over the world. As if all of us are just accompanying you here to just discuss your issues when you do not give any I consideration of what is obtaining member. in many other parts of the world. So, Speaker, I think we should express Sarah's discomfort that all the time we have to be bogged down to what are the interests of countries which historically are associated with colonialism you, and repression member. of the world. It's unacceptable. Thank you. That is the contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. The, the next speaker I now invite the World Health Organization. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the World Health Organization, WHO, warmly welcomes the selection of a focus on that disastrous humanitarian situation in multiple countries around the world. We are with our staff present in each and every of those crises on the ground to support the local authorities, to support the national authorities in um, working on helping the population which is affected it directly and indirectly in their health, especially concerning women and children's health, where there is a very, very harsh situation. WHO is currently working on 52 graded emergencies all around the world. All the countries that you have listed in the resolution and many more are included in that. We will have this week a meeting with national public health institutes where the work and the response to such emergency and humanitarian situation is, is front and center to really support all your countries in working on it. We work on both sides of the front line. We are not with the one or with the other. We are with the people who need the support in their health. We have also an initiative on health for peace where health can actually help bridging the unacceptable divides. 
and we would propose to the co-sponsors that we work with them to amend the resolution to include the health and to include the strong work WHO is doing with IPU into the resolution. Thank you, Madam Chair. I thank you, Honourable Member. Honourable Members, all those who have requested the floor before we close the list of speakers have spoken. And now we have our last speaker, who is the co-author of the resolution, and that is Chile. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. I would like to try to answer all the questions put, and I would like to say to the representative of Syria that the tone of the statement is exactly the tone which we seek to display in this resolution. The vulnerability of women when they are in such situation and children is duly referred to and uh, we would uh, welcome his input to strengthen the resolution. The representative of Armenia said that contrary to what was said by one delegate, uh, these uh, situations concern all people and all situations where there, there are thousands and thousands of people who are suffering. We'd be very happy to include all those groups of people you were referring to, all these people suffering from the humanitarian crisis in their country. Portugal, we'd like to say that we're deeply concerned by the rights of women and children as stated in the resolution, and in particular how these rights are respected when women have to leave their country and fend for themselves in very complicated situations. We think that it's necessary to respect all rights, particularly those rights recognized in all of the countries. Uh, where they're being given refuge. The representative of Peru was saying that uh, we should, there are many, many crises, and in the list, some situations of crisis are not referred to, but we can rectify this willingly. We believe that this is the kind of resolution that uh, is uh, designed uh, to reflect uh, the vision of the situation of all those people. Uh, made a statement here. It's necessary to ensure that justice once again uh, prevails. There are thousands and thousands of Ukrainians who suffer from war. This was an unprovoked war. They didn't want this war. And uh, the state considers that international uh, resolutions uh, in terms of Ukraine are not